So next up is the intersection of two lines in three space. So first of all, what are the possible ways that two lines in three dimensions can intersect? So one way is that the two lines intersect at a point. So here's line one. Let's say this is line two. And they both intersect at a single point. The second way that they can intersect is if they are parallel and they coincide with each other. So here's line one, and line two sits on top or in line one. So those are the two cases where they can intersect. They can intersect in a line or they can intersect at a point. So for non-intersecting lines, we have two scenarios. The first one is that they're parallel and distinct. So here's line one, line two is parallel to line one, and they never intersect. The second are what we call skew lines. So again, here's line one. And if we look at it one perspective, line two may look like it intersects if you look from a top view, but there's some distance between the two lines and therefore they don't intersect. So we call these skew lines. Now, some of these cases can be determined just by looking at their direction vectors. So let's go back to the first two. Notice the direction vectors for intersecting at a point. These lines must have direction vectors that are non-collinear. So there is no constant in which I can multiply the direction vector from line 2 to get the direction vector from line 1. If we look at our parallel cases, we can find a constant in which we can multiply the direction vector by from one of the lines to get the other direction vector. And same thing for the ones below, parallel and distinct. We will see that the direction vector of line 1 will be scalar multiple of the direction vector of line 2. And for the skew case, there will be no scalar multiple for the direction vectors. Looking at the direction vectors will help guide us to what type of answer we're looking for. Are we looking for one that skew or intersects in a point? Or are we looking at the case where the lines are parallel and they are either distinct or they coincide. So our example for today. Determine the points of intersection for each pair of lines if any exists. Well first off let's take a look at the direction vectors. And right away before calculating the point of intersection we should note that these lines are not parallel to each other because their direction vectors are not scalar multiples of each other. First off we see that negative 1, 1 and 4 does not equal a scalar of negative 6, negative 1, and 6. So this tells us that the lines either intersect at a point or the lines do not intersect and are skew lines. So we either have the intersection of a point or we have skew lines. So let's look at how we determine which of those two we have. So the method I like to use is to rewrite both equations in parametric form. So let's start with line 1. So there's our parametric equations for line 1. Do the same thing for line 2. We're going to take, let's say, the x and y components and sub them into each other. And then what I would do is rearrange this equation. Do the same thing for the y components. Now we have two equations and two unknowns, so we can solve for the values of L and K. So using elimination, I can just add these two equations together. And we get that L is equal to 1. So next, I'm going to sub L equals 1 into one of my two equations. So let's say we pick equation number 2. So I'm going to get 1 plus K is equal to 3. And we see that K is equal to 2. So now this tells us that we have a k and l value where the x and y values intersect at a specific point. So now let's check to see if the z value also intersects at that point. So for line 1, we determine that the k value must be 2. And for line 2, we determine that the l value must be 1 for them to intersect at that x and y value. If we sub in a k value of 2, into the equation of line 1, we get that x is equal to negative 5. 
y is equal to 3, and we get that z is equal to 12. Do the same thing for line 2. We get that x is equal to negative 5, y is equal to 3, and z is equal to 12. So this proves to us that the point of intersection is negative 5, 3, and 12. But here are some other key points. First point, these prove your math from above. So these must be the same. And I'm talking about this here. Because we use those two equations, those x and y values must be the same. What identifies whether or not we have a set of skew lines or lines that intersect at a point is this last part here. So since these are both the same, that means these must intersect at that point. So therefore, our point of intersection, x, y, z, is equal to negative 5, 3, and 12. All right, second set of lines. Again, start with the direction vectors. And in this case, we notice the direction vectors are scalar multiples. If I multiply the direction vector of line 1 by negative 2, I get the direction vector for line 2. That means these lines are parallel, and we need to decide whether or not they're distinct lines, or do they sit on top of each other. So how do we prove whether they're parallel and distinct, or parallel and coincident? Well, one method I like to use, let's write one of the equations in parametric form. So x equals 1 minus 2k, y equals 2 plus k, and z equals 1 plus 5k. So there's line 1 in parametric form. Next, I'm going to take line 2 and identify the point on line 2. So the point we have is negative 1, negative 1, and 3. Imagine that we have the two lines here, line 1 and line 2. I know the point on line 2. That's the negative 1, negative 1, and 3. If this point is also on line 1, that means that these lines must be the same line. So again, my point on line 2 is also a point on line 1, and both these lines are parallel, then line 2 and line 1 must be the same line. So let's check. So what I'm going to do now is sub the point into the equation of the line. So I'm going to sub the point from line 2 into the equation for line 1. So I get negative 1 equals 1 minus 2k. So there is the x component. If I solve for k, I get k is equal to 1. Next, let's go to the y value. I get negative 1 is equal to 2 plus k. If I solve for k, I get k equals 1. And finally, for z, if I sub in 3, I have that 3 is equal to 1 plus 5k. And if I solve for k, I get that k is equal to 2 over 5. So you see that we have a problem here. These two worked. If this if the line was on the plane, then the third parameter should have also been z component. We should have had a k value also of 1. So this tells us our lines are parallel and distinct, which means there are no points of intersection. And we're done. All right, we see there's no scalar multiple of m1 that equals m2. So this tells us that the lines either intersect at a point or the lines do not intersect in our skew lines. So let's go through this final example. So same as example A, we're going to rewrite these equations in parametric form. So line 1. And line 2, let's rewrite them. Then I'm going to take any two of the variables. So I'm going to take x and y. I'm going to sub the x and y's from both lines into each other. So there are my two equations. Now I can solve for the values of l and k using substitution 
or elimination. Now if I subtract, I end up with 9k is equal to negative 9. So I get that k is equal to negative 1. So now I'm going to sub k equals negative 1 into equation 1 or 2. So let's say I pick equation number 1. And if I do that, I get L is equal to 5. So I have L is equal to 5, K is equal to negative 1. Now let's check our work. So for line 1, we, we determined that K is equal to negative 1. And for line 2, we determined that L is equal to 5. For line 1, I get that X is equal to 5, Y is equal to negative 1, and Z is equal to 0. If I sub negative 1 into the formula for line 1, and for line 2, again, I get x is equal to 5, y is equal to negative 1, but in this example, I get z is equal to negative 2. This is a good thing, because notice these are the same, which they should be. And in this case, these are different, which tells us we have skew lines. So since these lines are skew, there are no points of intersection. Try the following questions, and good luck.